To calibrate or anything? No, well, I calibrated it, you just didn't see it. Ready? Uh, okay, Jordan, back up. Turning up assistance. You ready? Okay. Okay, ready? The video you're about to see is our first out-of-lab test of our AVA exoskeleton, designed to help those that have to work in hazardous environments and need to carry heavy personal protective equipment, or PPE, on their backs, usually in the form of an air tank. We planned out the path before I actually walked it, um, but we never did any rehearsal, so you'll be seeing a lot of firsts today, which is pretty cool. One of the cool parts about AVA, because the hips have all three degrees of freedom unlocked and two of them powered, it's able to provide a lot of assistive force as I'm moving, but also to allow me to move naturally. It allows me to pivot on a much smaller radius. Going through doors is also interesting because the device extends from my body slightly. And you'll also see one of the funny things there is I almost unplugged a wire. You'll see me grab it and be like, oh, are you okay? <laughs> um, but this is also the first time that we've ever gone upstairs in the device. And walking upstairs is cool because it's kind of just like, suddenly your foot's on the next step, and then suddenly your foot's on the next step without really even thinking about it. You just gotta start the motion and the XO takes over in a lot of scenarios, even though you still have to do all of the thinking and all of the balance. Ava itself assists the hips, knees, and ankles using actuators, and it is powered off of two batteries in the backpack. The device is using a gravity compensation style control where it reads sensors on insoles that are inside of the shoes and then understands where the joints and linkages are placed based off of a real-time updating dynamic model of the system. And then using that, it offloads the weight of itself from my body through actuator joint torques. And walking around, it's kind of interesting from an engineer's standpoint and from a researcher's standpoint, you start to kind of think about what exactly could be improved almost immediately as you start moving, especially out of the lab. Because in the lab, we are mainly testing in controlled environments and trying to get good, clean data, good, clean quantitative results. There's also a lot of qualitative work that needs to be done. So a lot of user preference, a lot of feel, and a lot of things you can't really capture by just doing analysis or by collecting data. You have to wear it and you have to feel it yourself to be able to kind of really understand what the end user is going to be feeling. And this is the first time ever going downstairs in the device. Since this was the first time going downstairs, I was a little nervous. But as I took the first few steps, I kind of realized that there was really no need to be worried because the exoskeleton was doing its job and providing support for my legs as I moved down the stairs. This is also pretty interesting because I realized I didn't have any handholds. So it was a little bit scary um, because again, it was, the it was one of the first times going downstairs, but um, got a lot of people around me to help me, which was really nice. Walking around outside, you don't really understand how uneven the pavement is. And especially because the suit is moving in certain ways in your body, it's interesting to feel how it moves over that, wouldn't say rough, but uneven terrain. In our controlled lab environment, where the floor is mainly a concrete slab, you don't get a lot of variations. And as I'm walking across this varied surface, it's also interesting because in a lot of scenarios, we thought that in order to walk around any type of rough terrain that we would need to add more degrees of freedom to the system. But as it stands right now, that might that may not even be really necessary because I'm walking in a balanced fashion here. Also, another cool part about Ava is that it's highly adjustable. Um, all the people you see walking with me right now, we've fit this device on each one of them going from around five foot five inches to six foot seven inches. And even in those ranges, it's still not at its maximum settings. So. Uh, it can be fit to a lot of different types of people, uh, which is another main novelty of Ava. And um, like I said, one of the most novel parts about Ava Mark II is that it's a load carriage exoskeleton, but because it's only meant to carry loads that are within the range of protective equipment used by those at nuclear sites, it's actually a lot lighter than traditional devices. Even though it's still around 70 pounds with the batteries on, it, you can still walk pretty normally when that gravity compensation assistance is applied. One of the coolest parts about working on exoskeletons in general is that you get to feel exactly what you've designed and exactly what you've made. Specifically that 
while the device, there's a lot of stuff to improve, it's a huge milestone for it to be able to work in a outdoor environment and to do a task that someone might need to do at their work site. Walk for a long period of time while having a, a, a big heavy air tank on their back could be an application. But generally speaking, it's very rewarding to, after all the developments are done, after you've grinded on a problem for a long period of time, it's very rewarding to exactly feel the fruits of your labor as you move, which is really cool. We are continuing to advance to actual field usage, and going outside like this is a big first step. And one of the cool parts about our work at IHMC is that we're always trying to find ways of improving the human condition. And so with exoskeletons, it's a really good joiner between robotics and human performance. And so there's a lot of avenues for us to be able to apply our knowledge in robotics to assist those that are actually doing hard jobs in the real world, which I think is, is amazing. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. <laughs>